Hello Super Adventure Programmers. I wanted to make a little video here to show you how to do some refactoring, both how to do it and why you want to do it. Right now the player class in Super Adventure is a pretty big class. It's 662 lines long and we have some really big functions in here. Move to starts at line 302 and ends at 406, so it's 104 lines long. And it's full of a lot of ifs, elses, and for eaches, and it's a little difficult to keep track of what's going on in there. So I'll show you a way to clean up your solution and make it easier to work with, and maybe even find a bug or two along the way. The first thing I want to point out is that I'm using Subversion and Visual SVN for source control. If you're refactoring, making changes to the program, you really want to have source control in place. This way you can make a change, test it out. If it didn't work, you can always revert your code back to how it was before you made the change. The first thing we're going to do is get rid of some extra stuff in here. If you notice at the top of the player class, we have our using statements. And two of them, using system.txt and using systemthreading.tasks, are light gray and the others are black. If we hover over it, we get a message that says, using directive is unnecessary, show potential fixes, control plus period. So I'm going to press control period and Visual Studio shows me that I can remove the unnecessary using statements. And here it shows me the lines it wants to take out. And it asks me, do I want to fix this in this document, in the project or in the whole solution? And I'm going to do the whole solution shows me a list of things it wants to change. If I wanted to, I could go look at these individually, but I'm going to trust Visual Studio and click Apply. Now if we go back up top to our using statements, we see those two extra ones are gone. And if we look over here at our Super Adventure solution, we see a lot of yellow circles, so a lot of these files have been changed. Let's build this and make sure that it still works. Okay, no errors. We'll start it and run it a little bit. Looks like everything's still working. So let's check this into source control. We'll go down here to commit. And my comment will be removed using Let's go down here to the move to function. If we look at line 316, we have an if statement. If new location dot quest available here, not equal to null. Personally, I think having a lot of not equals or nots in a comparison statement makes it a little bit harder to read, a little harder to understand in a natural language. So what I want to do is add a little bit clearer property in here. We'll go to the location class and I'm going to create a public boolean property called as a quest and add a git return quest available Here, not equal to null. Now we have a property here that is a little bit more readable. So we can go back to our player class and say if new location dot has a quest, which I think makes it a little bit easier to understand than quest available here, not equal to null. And at this point, we really don't need this comment on line 315. Does the location have a quest? Because our next line is if new location has a quest. This is something that people talk about when they say your code shouldn't need any comments. It should be easy to understand without any additional comments. 
On line 318, we have the player already has quest variable. And if we right click on it and say, find all references, we can look down here at the bottom of Visual Studio and see that it's only used on line 322. We create it up here and we use it a couple lines later. We can eliminate this variable and just put the has this quest right into the if statement. For the refactoring tools in Visual Studio, we can click on the variable, do control period, and then select inline temporary variable. So that's going to move the code from this variable to where it's used. And apply that. So now we have if has this quest, new location, quest available here. On line 318, we have the same type of thing. So we will do control period, preview changes, and apply. And now we can get rid of a couple lines of comments. So now this reads a little bit more like a normal sentence. If new location has a quest, and if has this quest, that isn't quite clear, so I want to rename this one. go to implementations, right click on it and select rename. I'll just rename it player has this quest and click on the apply button. So now if we go back down to our move function we have if new location has a quest, if player has this quest, a little bit clearer to understand at least to me. Now let's do a method extraction. Here we have a chunk of code. If the player has all the items to complete a quest, then we're going to display some messages, give them their quest completion item, give them their experience points and gold, and mark the quest completed. This could probably all be pulled out into its own function. This is kind of doing one thing here. So we can highlight it. Do control period and select extract method. So we're going to pull all this code out into its own function. Click on preview changes, apply it, and then now we need to give it a new name and we'll call it give player quest rewards. So now our statement is, if player has all items to complete quest, give player quest rewards. A little bit clearer. If we right click and go to the implementation, we can look at the function. So there's all that code that used to be in the move to function. And now that it's a little bit smaller, we can probably remove our comments. rearrange things a little bit differently. So we show our, all of our messages, give them the experience points, the gold, remove the quest completion items, add the quest reward item to their inventory, and mark the quest as completed. Generally speaking, you want your functions to be pretty small. 15 lines to 20 lines seems to be a good point. 